Hey there. Welcome to another screencast from the Coding Pad. This is Mary. And this is the third screencast in a series of back to basics, um, complete beginner um, tutorials that I'm doing, showing you how to work in your local environment to create projects, create websites, and, and, and test the different technologies that you see talked about on the web or just to learn PHP. And we started off by installing WAMP server on Windows. And like you saw, you have the option to install XAMPP or MAMP if you're on a Mac, or just to kind of do it manually, starting from just installing this, the program separately and then configuring them. Um, but in, in the screencast, we talked about how to install a WAMP server and how to do some different configurations. In the second part, we went ahead and learned how to create a project where to save your files and how to use PHP my admin to create databases, delete databases, create users, give users privileges, and add users to tables. And I hope that so far that you, it, this has been helpful in, in sort of getting you started and sort of getting you over that initial, how do I set things up so that I can work locally and not, not have to pay for hosting or you know go online every time I want to experiment with something. In this third um, installment, we are simply going to install some scripts. So we, we have our environment set up and ready to go. And now I just want to look at how to install a few scripts. Um, and you'll find that the process is pretty much the same. And, and when I say scripts, I mean things like WordPress and Drupal and ModX and Joomla and, and whatever your poison, you know, whatever you want to install. Um, if you're creating your own, you know, you're doing your own PHP programming, we already talked about where you would save your files, but you may be wanting to experiment with something like WordPress to learn how to build a blog. You may be wanting to go through the Drupal tutorials and, and you want to do it locally on your own computer. You may be wanting to go through the ModX tutorials and you find that the process is pretty much the same. Um, you, you, know, you need to download the application, you need to download Drupal or ModX or WordPress. Um, <coughs> you need to copy the files to your www folder. As we said, that's where you set up your um, projects. And then you need to create a database and then create a user or add an existing user to that database. And then you can proceed with the install. And so that's what we're going to do. And we're kind of going to do maybe one or two just to give you the idea and to show you that it's really much the same process um, when you're installing a lot of the scripts that you find out there. So for starters, um, as always, we want to make sure that our WAMP server is up and running. Um, you'd be surprised how many times I fire up my laptop and I'm ready to start doing some development work and I keep wondering what's going on, why won't localhost open, and usually it's something as simple as I have not started up my WAMP server. So always make sure that you have WAMP server running, right? And I'm just going to go to localhost. That's usually my first stop. Make sure everything loads up great. I um, want to make sure that I'm working with 5.2.11 just to avoid incompatibilities. Um, when you install, for example, Drupal 6, I'm pretty sure is not yet compatible with PHP 5.3. And, and so you want to make sure that you're running the right version of PHP for the script that you're installing. So then the next thing is, of course, to go to the website. So let's start with WordPress. It's pretty popular. Um, you want to go to... WordPress, download the latest version. In at this time, it's 2.8.6. I already have that downloaded. And I'm going to go to my downloads folder, and I'm going to extract it. And I also have Drupal, so I'm going to extract that too. And time permitting, we will um, install those two. And actually, let me just extract ModX too, just in case we have time to um, install that also. All right, so while those extract, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my, um, that's still extracting, I'm going to open up my www folder, and I'm going to go ahead and create my projects. So remember from last time we have the test project that we created, and if I go back to the WAMP server homepage and I reload it, you see that that's the only project that shows up is test. So I'm going to create two more. And the first one I'm going to call Drupal 6. I'm going to create a second one. I'm going to call this one simply WordPress. Okay, so then I'm going to open that and when I come to 
my downloads folder. Those are finished um, extracting. What I want to do, what you want to do is copy the files inside your folder into your project folder. You don't want to copy, you don't want, for example, to just move this whole Drupal 6 folder there. No, you want to just move, oops, and now I moved it somewhere else. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. You want to actually move the files and folders that are inside your Drupal 6 folder into your project. So I'm going to copy those. I'm going to paste them there. All right, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the same thing with the WordPress project. I'm just going to do these and um, take it from there. So I'm just going to copy these. And I'm doing this because I'm on Windows, and, and if you're on Mac, you'd probably just set, do the same thing, kind of copy-paste or drag across. But if you're working on a remote server, if you're working, say, on, on a host, I mean, on a shared host somewhere, you would use FTP to upload this file. It's the same process, that you, but you would use FTP. But since I'm working locally, I can just use Explorer, and there's no problem there. All right, so I have that set and ready to go. If I go into my WW, I have those. And now I can proceed with the process of installing. So if I refresh this, I now have my Drupal 6 project, my test project, and my WordPress project. So let's start with WordPress, and let's just click that. And it says that it wants to create a configuration file, so I say that's fine. And now here we come. This is the step where um, the database stuff comes in. So it says you know you need to have some information. We need to know the database name, database username, password, host, and table prefix. And that's number five is only really important if you're doing stuff like, you know, more than one WordPress in a single database. All right, so let's go here to PHP my admin, which I already have open. And you can see I just have my two base databases. So I'm going to create a database and I'm just going to call it WP. And again, I'm just going to use the same collation as before. It's UTF general. I like it. I find that it works. And, uh, it's useful for reasons that we'll explore in future screencasts. So there it's created my database. The next thing I need to do is I need to assign a user. I need to assign a user to this database. Now you remember in the last screencast we created this user Mary and I'm going to use this user for the projects that I'm working on. Again, I don't want to give Mary any global privileges, but instead I want to add privileges on the WP database. All privileges, we've already done this, all right? And so I'm going to save that. So now if I come back here to my setup, I say, let's go. I have my information I need. My database name is WP. You see that there? That's the name of the database, WP. My username, we know, is Mary. And Mary's password from yesterday was one, two, I mean, from the previous screencast, I'm sorry, was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The database host is localhost. That almost never changes. And your table prefix doesn't really matter unless, like um, the instructions say, unless you plan to do um, more than one installation in the same database. So if I now submit, keep our fingers crossed. All right, Spacky, you've made it through this part of the installation, which means that, w that WordPress was now able to see my database, able to see my user, and create um, the tables that it needs to do its thing. So now I can run the install. And there we go. So I'm just going to call this my WordPress blog. And I'm just going to um, just enter info at mylocalsite.com. doesn't really matter. And I'm going to install WordPress. And WordPress installs. This is not really a tutorial about WordPress, but it's good to kind of just see it all the way to the end. If I now go and I log in, this is working exactly like it would if I had installed this on a remote server somewhere. I log in, and there we go. I have a WordPress blog installed locally on my computer at localhost WordPress. Works great. I can now learn how to use WordPress locally without you know, having to go and and install somewhere in a remote server. I can now learn how to use WordPress here. I have access to basically anything that I would have access to if I was working, you know, on a shared host somewhere out there on the internet. 
So let's do one more just for practice. I don't think we're going to have time to actually do three. But just for practice, I'm going to close this. Um, just before